So if you have an oil, drop the oil in your hand, rub your hands together, and then small into the hand. Opening the hands up to breathe out. We're going to stay here for a full minute. Quieting the mind. If you don't have an oil, take your right hand over your heart, left hand over your belly. In your sitting position, you want to make sure that you're not on top of your feet. Your heels are stacked up. Heels are dropping down. Uh, knees are dropping down. We have a pillow under your tush. Tussock so that your hips can rise up. Your knees can fall down. Roll your shoulders back. Hearts lifting. I like to start the practice with an essential oil because the, the sense of smelling helps to quiet the mind and stop the activity in the brain and bring you into the present moment. So you can quickly enter into your physical body and leave the mental body behind. Be here for an hour or so today. And I like to call this morning practice davening with our movement, praying with our bodies. So try to keep the mind quiet as we move. And begin to deepen the breath, deep breath in through the nose. Deep breath out through the nose. And everybody bring the hands away. Take right hand over your heart, left hand over your belly. We'll take three more deep breaths here, breathing in deeply through the nose. Feel the chest rise, the belly expand, breathing out through the nose. And begin to count the breath, counting to five as you breathe in. Counting to five as you breathe out. Two more times. One more time, counting the breath to five. Let's do that one more time, counting to five. Returning to your deep breath, but no longer counting it. Take your hands, palms down on the knees. So in Ayurveda, palms facing down helps to bring the energy down and quiet the mind. Palms facing up, which you see often in yoga, is helping to collect more energy into the body. So if you're feeling like your energy is low and you need more energy, Aside from the fact that it's five o'clock in the morning, five to the week, six o'clock in the morning. If you're feeling like you need to collect more energy and have more energy for the day, hands can face up. If you feel like your energy is good and just need to ground, palms face up. And now let's start to make circles around the hips, breathing out and you move forward. Mm. So I'm going to change the breath, actually. I want you to breathe out as you tuck your belly in and move back. Breathing in as you move forward. Breathing out, tuck your belly in and move your back. Breathing in as you fold forward. So find your rhythm of your breath. Keep making it long and deep. And move around the hips. 
Straightening the back as you move forward, arching back, rolling the belly in as you move back. Dog tail in the face. Take three more circles in this Good, and slowly change to the other direction. Breathe. Reconnect with your breath. Breathe in as you move forward. Breathe out as you arch. Two more times. Last time. Making your way back to center. Rolling the shoulders away from the ears, chest is rising up. Rise up through the crown of the head. So you should feel this contra movement of the crown lifting up and the tailbone pressing down into the belly. Mat or into the pillow. And then arching back with your breath out. Pull your belly in, drop your chin so you can touch it to the chest. Breathing in, belly chest moves forward. Look up. Breathing out, pulling back. Breathing in, reaching forward. Breathing out, arching back. <coughs> Breathing in, chest forward, roll your shoulders back, look up. <coughs> A couple more times. Breathing in, out, arching back. Breathing in, belly, chest forward. <coughs> Last time, stretching. Opening up our chest. And letting out all the coughs. <laughs> Breathe, you know. <coughs> Two more times. Close your eyes. One more time. Breathing out. And back to center. Neutral spine. Make sure your shoulders roll back. Heart lifts. Crown of the head is reaching up. Tailbone is pressing down into the block. Breathing in. Reach the arms up, palms can touch softly, and then move to the left. So I will mirror you, moving to the left, left hand on the floor, reach the right arm over the ear, both arms are straight. Press that opposite knee down, so that right knee is pushing toward the floor, and keep reaching over through your fingertips and the straight arm best as you can. Let's take one more breath here. Mm. And back to center, reach both arms up strong, palms touch. You can feel the sides of your arms alongside your ears. And then breathe out as you reach to the right. That right arm can stretch and slide on the floor, but keep it straight. Left arm is reaching over the ear, elbow is straight. Spread the fingers to activate all the muscles in the arms. Now that left knee is pressing towards the floor and see if you can fold over a little bit deeper, take you one more breath. And back to center, arms reach up. One more time, the left. Let the left arm slide to make your whole side body reach a little bit deeper. Straight arms. Both fingers are spreading to activate the arms. And then drop that right knee down towards the floor a little bit deeper. One more full breath here. It should feel really nice through the adrenals and the kidney of the side body. 
and back up through center, reaching up on the touch. And touch any other side over to the right. Let both arms reach, fingers spread, and now press that opposite knee down, that left knee down. One deep breath here. And back to center. Palms touch. Feel the sides of the arms on the ears. And then we're going to reach forward. Fold from the hips and the waist. And then the arms come down to the floor. Reach the fingertips out. And keep walking them forward. So maybe you can fold a little bit deeper over the legs. And you got it. Stay here for three breaths. Close your eyes. Feel the breath. Two more breaths. One more breath. I'm going to pin by you so I can see what I'm doing. But, and slowly coming back up, walk the hands towards your legs. Slowly, slowly. Good, and reach the arms up. We're going to twist to the right. So take your left hand to the knee, right hand behind you. Put it over the back shoulder. Three. So keep looking over the back right shoulder and just three breaths three breath here. So breathing in, the spine lifts and twists. Breathing out, just a little bit deeper. Breathing in, spine is lifting and straightening. Breathing out, let's feel the deep. One more breath, breathe in. Breathe in. Back around to center, raise the arms up. Long stretch. Breathing out over to the other side. Right hand on your left knee, left hand to the other. Look over that back shoulder, tuck your belly in. Close your eyes and take three deep breaths, breathing in, spine rises up, and the belly floats forward. Breathing out, belly tucks in, reach this a little bit. Two more times. Use the breath to go deeper, breathing in, belly softens, the spine lifts. Breathing out, belly actively pulls in, and the spine twists a little bit. One more time like this, breathing in. Belly soft, pushing forward, spine is lifted. Breathing out, belly actively pulls in and twists with the spine. Go back to center, arms rising up, palms touch. Go turn the finger, interlace the fingers and turn the palms up. Activating the arms a little bit more. Look up. Arms reach back alongside the ears. And now look up into your hands. Stay here for two more breaths. Keep reaching through the hands. Drop the knees down. Reach up. One more breath. And then let the hands release. Coming all the way down. Fingertips to the floor. One more stretch here, reaching the right arm up. Wrap it around the head and it grabs the ear and pull your head to the right. Now lift your left arm up, shoulder height. And then take it back a bit and start to lower it towards the floor. And right where you feel the best part of your stretch, stay there. Maybe the fingertips won't find the floor. Or maybe they'll reach all the way down and fingertips will touch the floor. And that's where you'll find your best stretch in the neck. Breathe. And then let the hands slide through your hair. 
over to the opposite ear and push your head up like you can't lift it yourself. And then take the fingertips back to the floor and side to the other side, reaching the left arm up and then wrapping it around the head to find your right ear and pull the head to the left. Now take that right arm up shoulder height and then reach it back a bit and start to lower it down. And move slowly so you can really feel where you feel the stretch in the neck. Maybe the fingertips will make it all the way down to the floor, or maybe the hand will continue to float, and you'll feel a nice stretch through the neck, up into the ear, maybe all the way into the head. Breathe. And as if you can't lift your head yourself, you slide the hand. Make contact with the entire scalp, giving yourself a whole new hairdo. And hand is underneath the ear and pushes the head up. Release the arm back down, fingertips are slightly behind you on the floor, roll your shoulders back. And reach up, breathing in, look up. Breathing out, folding forward to hands and knees. So move the Hello to the side. Hands are under your shoulders. Knees are under your hips. Face to the side so you can get a better And you're going to wag your tail slowly from side to side. So this is moving the spine, translating it in the side direction. Giving some nice cerebral spinal fluid into your each vertebrae. And it releases the lower back. And now you're going to take your hips to the right and look to the right. So you're squeezing your whole side body. And then take your hips to the left and look over that left shoulder. As if you're trying to get your nose to your hip. Just squeezing that side over to the right, squeeze, and over to the left, squeeze. And then back to center, let's arch up like a cat, breathing out, chin towards your chest, really pull your belly in, and then breathing in, drop the belly, roll the shoulders, looking up, and stretching the belly and the chest and the neck. Breathing out, arching up, tuck your belly and chin towards your heart. Breathing in, drop the belly and over to your heart. Three more times, move at the rhythm of your breath. Full breath out, out arches you up. Full breath in, moves you forward, dropping you down. Like your spine is a wave, breathing out. The wave is reaching up and pressing. Breathing in, the waves dropping on the shoulders. Two more times. Breathing up. Breathing in. Last time. Breathing up. Breathing in. Back to center, neutral spine, reach the right leg out and point the toes. So the leg is level with the hip and your arms are right underneath your shoulders. Now reach your opposite arm out, left arm. Thumb is facing the ceiling like you're hitchhiking. Step, uh, spread the fingers. Arm is level with the ear, so you're reaching to the fingertips, reaching to the toes. Then bend the back knee, reach the arm around to find the ankle or the toes. If you find your ankle, flex the foot and push the foot into the hand and up. Or a back bend here, rolling shoulder back from that left shoulder. 
And then release, reach the arm out, reach the leg out. Fingers are spread, toes pointed, tucking your belly in so the whole core is working here to keep you stable. And then drop the hand down, drop the knee down. Stay here for breath, notice how you feel. And then other to the other side, reach the left leg out, point the toes. And now your right arm reaching down. Thumb is facing the ceiling, fingers are spread. Looking down at your mat, so looking at your thumb to lengthen the neck, keeping it long. As if you're reaching through the crown of the head and the toes. Now bend the back knee, reach around the ground, the ankle, the toes. If you have your ankle, flex the foot, push it into the hand and up. If you don't, just stay as stable as you can here. Breathe. One more breath. And then release the leg up. Release the arm up, point the toes, spread the fingers, look down at your mat. And then release the hand down, down. Stay here for a breath. And wag out your tail up, side to side movement of the hips. Go back to center, neutral spine, reach the right knee out, right leg out, place the toes, and now reach the right hand out, so both hands. If you don't feel stable, the left foot can kick out, we call it a kickstand, and then the arm can reach up. Stay here, try to drop that right hip, reach to the right arm. Now we're going to open up, open the hip up to the right. Reach the arm over the ear, point through the toes, so you're in this long straight line from your fingertips through your toes. Now reach the arms straight up, so your shoulders stack almost like triangle arms. Bend the knee, reach for the ankle with the toes. Flex the foot if you have your ankle, and push the foot into the hand, so similar to what we just did. Same side, same hand, same way. Breathe. One more breath. Reach the leg out long, reach the arm straight up. Shoulders are stacked. Now take the leg down forward. So it's going to drop in front of you a little bit. Like stay straight, that right leg. Toes stay pointed. And now let the arm drop behind you. So it's a slight back bend, a mini wild thing almost. Hips move forward, chest moves forward, head drops back. And let your arm drop with gravity, opening up the heart, opening up the hips. Breathe. Breathe. Good. Back around, reach the arm. And let it come slowly all the way back around onto your mat. Bring your knee back in. And notice how you feel. Let's reach back into child's pose. So toes together, knees apart, push the hips back. Reach the arms forward. You can go to your chin if you want to go deeper or just drop to the forehead. Let's take two breaths here. You're staying active in your child's pose, so your fingers are spread. Elbows are off the floor. You're actively pushing through your hands so that your tailbone is reaching back to your feet. And stretching. This is a great, gentle, but active back stretch. It's quieting the mind because the forehead is on the floor. A good opportunity to get back in touch with that deep breath. And if you're counting it again for five times. And then your next breath in, coming up, arching through your cat, come up to your hands and knees. Replace your knees under your shoulders, <clears throat> hands under your 
or knees under your hips, hands under your shoulders. So other side, reaching the left leg out with the toes. And now you're going to reach your left hand out. So if you need more stability, kickstand that right leg. And then reach the left hand out. Drop the left hip. Reach the left hand. So you're going to see me from the back view, which is a good view. Just look up. Open up to the left. Strong, straight spine, reaching the arm over the ear, spread the fingers, point the toes, and then reach for the ankle or the foot. If you have the ankle, flex the foot, push it into the hand, arching you back, creating this back bend. Drop your head onto your shoulder. Breathe. Now reach the leg out long, point the toes, reach the arm alongside the ears. And now reach the arm straight up. Take the leg down and in front of you a bit. So the whole foot stabilizes on the floor. And then you drop the arm back. Hips move forward, heart moves forward. Slight back bend, breathe. Mm. And then coming all the way back around, taking the hands to the mat, bringing the knee, stay in your four point tabletop first. Notice how you feel. And then turn your toes under and reach up into your downward facing dog. Hips to the sky, heels to your mat as best as you can. Knees are pressing out towards that back wall. Roll your shoulders away from your ears. And then move here, bending one knee and then the other. Stretching out the leg. Moving in your hips so your hips drop. And the belly twist as you walk out your dog. Push actively through your hands so your belly and chest is moving towards the top of your thigh. And then straighten both legs, heels down, hips toward the sky. Tuck your belly in. So you're pulling your belly in actively. Bend both knees deeply, belly towards the top of the thigh. So you actually might be able to touch your belly or your lower rib cage to the top of your thighs because you're bending your knees so much, but your tailbone is still reaching up. Notice how long your spine is, how active your arms are here. Keep that as you reach your hips up to the sky and heels drop to the mat. So do that one more time. Bend both knees deeply, bow towards the thigh. Maybe they touch. Press through the hands, roll the shoulders away from the ears. Keep this long spine. As you straighten the legs, heels press down, hips reach up. One more breath. And then look up at your fingertips, bend your knees, right foot steps all the way through. And then your left foot. Folding forward, first forward fold, grab your elbows. You can have a slight bend in your knees. And you can rock from side to side with your hips and your body. <coughs> now drop your hands. If they touch the floor, great, or your fingertips, try to straighten the legs. Push the knees back, straighten. Straighten the thighs, fingertips to the floor, straighten the arms. Breathing in, looking up. Breathing out, step or step the right foot back or hop back. Stay here for a breath. In your breath. Breathing out, pull chaturanga or drop your knees. Breathing in, upward facing down. Breathing out, downward facing. Breathing in, right foot steps forward, left foot stays back. 
coming all the way up for your one. Stay here for a full breath, straight back leg. Front knee is over the ankle, don't grip your toes. Now next breath out, folding forward. Stepping back into your plank. Drop your knees if you need to or full cheddar. Breathing in, upward facing dog. Breathing out, downward facing. Next breath in, step your left foot forward and then your right foot drops down, coming up into your warrior one. Stay here for a couple breaths. Reach the arms up, straight back leg, knees right over the ankle. Mm -hmm. Breathing out, folding forward. Step the foot back, plank pose. Breathing out, full general breath. Breathing in, upward facing dog. Breathing out, downward facing dog. Five breaths here. You can stay here for five breaths or drop into your child's pose. Toes together, knees apart. And take your breaths in child's pose. Two more breaths. If you're in child's pose, come up to your down dog. So we can all move together, breathing in, looking up at your hands, bend your knees. Step your right foot forward or hop. Breathing out, folding forward, straight leg. Breathing in, bend your knees, ribcage touch, drop your tush, hands come up to your heart. So your chair pose. One more breath. Reach your arm, your heart up. Breathing out forward, fold rib cage touches, fingertips to the floor, straighten the legs. Breathing in, halfway lift. Breathing out and step your left foot back or hop back. Breathing in, stay here. Breathing out, full chatter on the lower. Upward facing dog, breath in. Breathing out, hips to the sky. Downward facing dog. Breathing in, right foot steps forward. Left foot down, coming up, warrior one. Stay here for one more breath. Straight back leg, bend the knee. Breathing out all the way down. Plank, stay here for a breath. Breathing out, lower, chaturanga. Breathing in, upward facing dog. Breathing out, downward facing dog. Breathing in, left foot steps forward, right foot up. Warrior one. Stay here for a breath or two. Strong legs, tuck your belly in. Breathing out, lower. Chaturanga, or nice pose, stay here for a breath. Breathing out, chaturanga. Breathing in, upward facing dog. Breathing out, downward facing dog. This is where you rest, five breaths. Or child's pose, toes together, knees apart. Push drops that back to your heels. Three more breaths. Two more breaths. One more breath. Coming up to your down dog if you're in child's pose. Next breath in, step your left foot forward or hop forward. Breathing out, folding forward. Breathing in, drop into your chair. Rib cage touches your thighs. Then the hands come up to your heart. Sitting up, roll your shoulders back, heart lifts. Two more breaths. Knees are pressing together. Big toes are touching. And 
sun. Breathing in. Breathing out. Tadasana. Arms are alongside the body. Eyes are closed. Mm, notice how you feel. Good. So we're going to go into some hip opening. So we'll move through vinyasa. Breathing in, reaching up. Breathing out, sitting in your chair. Press your knees together. Take your hands to your heart. Tuck your belly in. Breathing out, drop your chest to your um, thighs and then straighten your legs. Breathing in, looking up. Breathing out, step your right foot back or hop back. Breathing in, stay here. Breathing out, lower full chaturanga. Breathing in, upward facing dog. Breathing out, downward facing dog. Breathing in, right leg steps forward. And keep your back toes, you're, you're on your back toes, keep the heel up. And now come up. So the back heel is staying up. Reach up. Drop the knee over the ankle. Stay here for one more breath. And then you're going to slowly lower the knee to the floor. Take your hands down, fingertips facing the mat. Keep your back toes turned under and lift the back knee up. Good. And slowly lower. Good. Take your hands to your knee. Drop your hips forward. And back up. And then drop your hips forward like your tailbone will touch your front right heel. And back up. And we're going to stay down. Drop the hips down. Can your fingertips touch the floor on either side of the foot while you still stay up in the upper body? Good. Stay here for a couple more breaths. Good. And then we're going to move. Straighten the leg. And bend it. So try to keep your hands alongside your feet. Straighten. And bend. And straighten. And then one more time, straighten. And forward. Walk this right foot open as wide as your mat. Drop the back toes, relax the foot. Right hand goes to your knee and open that knee to the side. Where you can almost see the top of your, or the bottom of your foot. It's opening up. Keep that knee dropping as you take both hands to the floor and maybe go to your elbows. Right. Good. Good. So the knee's dropping and you're on your elbows. Looks like this from the front view. Mm -hmm. Good, now bring your knee back in so it touches the shoulder. So full lizard lunge, this is called. So the knee's touching the shoulders, you're on your elbows, relax the back foot. If you want to go a little bit deeper, the right hand reaches around to grab the toes of that left foot. If it's too much, you can come up onto a straight left arm. 
and maybe you can reach the foot a little bit easier. Full pose is on the elbow. And then opening up to the right. <coughs> Yeah, Woo. release the foot, take both elbows to the floor, and wag your tail from side to side. And then hands to the floor, straighten the arms to come up, straighten out that leg, rolling the hip back, let the hands slide back a little bit like you're staying to the inside of that foot, then you can right across from the foot. Drop that right hip down, leg is straight. Point the toes, stretch the front of the ankle. And coming back to bend your knee. Turn the back toes under. Hands on either side of the foot, you can walk that foot back to the center and reach it back into your downward facing foot. Standing on your left foot, right, right, right leg rises up for one legged down dog. And then opening up the hips to the right, you're looking under your right arm. Bend the knee, heel comes towards the tush, opening up the hip towards the ceiling. Knees reaching up, heels reaching back towards the tush. There's a twist in the belly and an opening in that right hip, breathe. Back around to center, straighten the leg, one leg and down and up. And then drop it down. Stay here for a breath, find your alignment, deepen your breath. <clears throat> and then your right knee, or your left leg, so your left leg steps all the way through. Keep your back toes turned under of that right foot and your heel stays up. And then we're coming forward into this floor, this lunge. Back leg is straight, don't bend the knee, it's straight. Front knee is bent right over the ankle, reach the arms up alongside the ears, stay here. And then slowly lower the knee to the floor. Drop the hands down alongside the hips, fingertips facing your mat. And one time, we're going to lift up by straightening that back leg. Hips stay down. Breathe. And bend the knee, drop it down. Good. Take your hands to your knees. Sitting up. And then dropping the hips forward. You can relax the back foot to the floor. And sitting up. And forward. And up. And forward. Stay forward. Take the hands to either side of the foot. Try to stay up in your upper body. Fingertips touch maybe. If they don't, you can take them to your hips. One more breath. And then you can lean the upper body forward. Take both hands to the inside of the foot and walk that left foot open to the left edge of your mat, close to the edge of the mat. Left hand on your knee, open the knee out to the left, and you start to open your foot. You can see the bottom of your foot. Breathe. Then drop to your elbows, keep the knee dropping down. You can still see the bottom of your foot in here. Mm. And then go ahead and step into that left foot and the knee comes back to the shoulder. Full lizard lunge, dropping the hips, knees coming way over the toes and you're on your elbows. 
If you want to take it a little bit deeper, you stay on the right elbow, reach the left arm around the body, bend the back knee and reach for the toes. Pulling the heel towards the tush. Opening the left shoulder up towards the sky, the heart rotates towards the sky. Looking up. Breathe. Release the foot, come back around. Clear your elbows, relax the back foot. Take two deep breaths here. And take your hands to your mat. Press it up. Turn the back toes under. Knee lifts up. Reach that front leg back into a downward facing dog. Mm, stay here for a breath or two, deepening your breath, feeling your body and your hips. Stepping in your left foot, or right foot, step in your right foot, left leg rises up, point your toes. And then you're going to open your hips to the left, looking under your left arm, leg is straight first, and then bend the knee, heel towards the touch, flex the foot. Knees rising up, hip is opening up towards the sky. Straight standing leg, straight arms, breathe. Now point your toes. Back around to center, straighten the leg for your one-legged down dog. And then drop the foot. Downward facing dog. And child pose. So stand the knees apart. Reach your arms forward. See if you can take your chin to the floor. For an upper neck opening, back of the neck. If it doesn't feel comfortable, forehead can drop to the floor. So stay here for one more breath. Good. Next breath in, come up into your downward facing dog. Right leg reaches up, one legged down dog reaches up. And then you're gonna bend your right knee, bring it all the way through to your heart and then drop it down between your hands into your half pigeon pose. Reach your back leg back, relax your back foot. You can actively pull this leg forward a little bit to get a stronger stretch in your hip. If your hip is really off the floor, you can tuck a pillow underneath. You want that hip and tush to be on the floor and hips are level. Yes, yeah, so you're at home, there must be pillows around to grab one and tuck it under your tailbone on that right side. And then we're gonna fold forward, reach your arms out in front of you and fold all the way down. Got three breaths here. Got two more breaths. One more breath. And then next breath in, slide your hand in alongside your knee, right under your shoulders, pressing up. Back leg swings around to come in front of you. 
and over that right knee. So you have to get the right knee to face the front and then the left foot steps right over the knee. Hug your knee in. And then drop your chin towards your knee. Keep hugging the leg in. And back up. We're going to go a little bit deeper. So now this left knee drops on top of the right. So one trick to get it really on top of there is your, your tush can come up and you cross the knees. So they really stack. Open your feet and then sit back down so that you're not sitting on your feet. So big hip opening, yeah. So if it's too much to stack the knees, you can just stay with the foot on the floor and the knee up a little bit. But if you can stack those knees, some of you might just feel good enough and tight enough and strong enough to just stay here, hands on your feet. Some of you might be able to drop over the knees and chin towards your knee. So big hip opening. So in our hips, we carry the sense of control. And in our current reality, we're not in control. So opening up the hips and releasing that false sense of security. There can be a lot of tension in the hip, <laughs> which has something to do with our mental body and our, our, our thought processes of that we are in control. We decide, we make the, all the decisions. So letting go of that sense of control and that tension that you carry in your hips with each breath. Be okay with letting go of control. <coughs> and being more open to the natural flow of life and trusting that Hashem has, ha has our back, God has our back has our best plan in mind <coughs> and everything's going to be just okay, more than okay. Two more breaths. And slowly with your next breath in, come on. <coughs> so let this left foot come onto the right knee, keep the foot flexed, and then this right leg opens up. So this is called fire log pose. Both of your legs are like fire logs, <coughs> creating this opening in the hips. So I'm not the best example because I have kind of tight hips. But eventually this left knee drops to your right foot and it feels beautiful and delicious. For me, it does not, it's a bit of torture. Mm, but I still do it because I know how good it is to open up the hips and slowly it'll get more open. So breathe. Mm. And breathe. So steps away legs out. Take your hands behind you, facing. Bend your knees as wide as your mat and drop your knees to one side and the other. And one side and the other. Go back to center. Hands are right under your shoulders. Lift your hips up for this reverse table. Move your knees forward, stretching the backs of your shoulders. And then drop your head back. And looking forward, drop the hips slowly, slowly. And other side. So you're going to bring your left knee in for your half pigeon. And Take that right leg back behind you. 
So left knee is holding in front of you, back leg is straight behind you. Find your hips, you can rock your hips from side to side, dropping the left toes to the floor, and then reaching it up and dropping and up. Now stay up, wedge a pillow underneath that left toes. So it's like left, left butt cheek if your hips, if you're not touching the floor. You want that right or that left butt buttocks to be on the floor and hips are level. And then you fold forward. Reach the arms out in front of you, drop the forehead to the floor. Take four or five breaths here, long deep breaths. You can count the breaths. Again, to return to that quiet body, quiet mind. And long deep breaths, counting to five as you breathe in. And counting to five as you breathe out. Let's do that for three more times. Three more breaths. Two more breaths. And last breath. Slide your hands underneath your shoulders, pressing up. And then that back right leg swings around to step over the left knee. Left knee is facing the front of the room. You can stay here. This might be a strong enough stretch for your hip. And hug your elbows, your hands around your shoulders, drop your chin towards your knee. <clears throat> this might feel strong enough in your hip. And if you want to go deeper, you're going to drop this right knee onto your left. So I can lift my tush up, my hip up to really stack the knees, and then I sit back down. Sometimes your knee will just automatically float up because the hips are tight, and that's okay. You're still finding a deeper, deeper place when you set up this way. You'll notice which side is tighter for you. Hands are on your feet as you pull forward. Chin towards your knee. Three deep breaths. And slowly coming up. Let the left, the right foot come on top of that left knee, foot is flexed, and then you help that left leg to come out. It's almost like you're creating this 90 degree angle with the left knee and that top right knee. And you give a little bit of pressure to press that right knee down to the floor, down to the opposite foot. Both feet are flexed. Each side's different, just know it. Yeah, this is it's a tough pose. For, for some people, it's not tough at all. I'm sure there's some of you out there that this feels amazing. And if it does and you don't feel much of a stretch, fold all the way forward. If I fold forward, you might hear me scream. <laughs> it's really ah, challenging. Uh, two more breaths. Mm -hmm. One more breath. <coughs> and release. Take the foot off. Both feet are as wide as your hips. Hands are behind you. And drop the knees from side to side. Oh, releasing any tension in the hips. <coughs> <coughs> and 
and coming all the way down to the floor. To finish our practice, let's do a twist and then we'll go into the Shavasana. Always good to end with a twist and nice and relaxing. So pull your knees in towards your chest and then drop your knees over to the left. Left hand on your knees, right arm opens up. If you want to take a bit of a stronger stretch, you can straighten that right leg and grab the toes with your left hand. I do this pose every yoga practice. I love it. I never get tired of it. So yummy for the body. Nice, nice twist for the belly and in internal organs. And a great opening in the leg and the IT band that gets really stiff from being a human being that stands. One more breath. And then bend the knee, both knees touch, and bring them back up to center and over to the right. Right hand touches. Left arms reaching out, look over the left side. And then if you want, you can straighten that top leg, reach for the toes, and take the foot back to the floor. One more breath. Bend the knees. Bring the knees back up to center. Drop the feet to the floor. Mm, go all the way on your mat. And stretch it out into your Shavasana. Keep your arms alongside the body, but open them up. You have plenty of room in your home. So let the arms really open up. Palms are facing up, face the ceiling. Press into the back of your head and slide your shoulders underneath you. So that raises the heart up. And breathe more deeply into your heart and chest. So we'll do a body scan to release any tension. Because after a strong workout, the body can really be quiet. The mind can be quiet, but the body, the muscles can still hold on to tension and be active. So let's release that consciously. So scanning the back of your head where it touches the floor. Notice the muscles in the skull, the muscles in your scalp and with the breath out. Imagine that they're releasing and dropping into the back of the floor. Scanning the face, feeling the eyes drop back into the back of the eye sockets. The cheeks release. The tongue drops to the center of the mouth. The throat relaxes. It drops towards the back of your neck. Notice where your shoulders touch the floor. There's more weight on your right side or your left. Just notice and then with your breath out, allow the shoulders to drop down. The bones become heavy. The muscles soften. Feel the backs of your arms, the backs of your forearms, the backs of your hands when they're touching the floor. And allow those muscles to release with your next breath out. The bones become heavy, the muscles soften, dropping towards the back of your body. 
scanning your lower back and where the lower back and the buttocks touch the ground. And again, just notice if there's more weight on your right or your left. Just seeing how the body lies on the floor. And with your next breath out, let the muscles of the buttocks, the muscles of the lower back release and drop into the back body. The bones become heavy. Notice the back of the legs, the back of the calves, and the back of the heels. Allow the feet to drop softer and to the side, externally rotating the legs so you can create more space in the pelvis and the hips. And allow the leg bones to be heavy and drop to the back of your body. Your muscles become heavy and soft and they drop. And your mat and the earth is supporting you as you lie heavy. And your front body feels soft and light. And even if there's activity around you, the kids, somebody making breakfast in the kitchen, try to ignore it and just stay quiet and calm. Life isn't perfect. Your meditation is not perfect. You can stay peaceful from within and quiet from within. And you can learn to react and respond to the world around you in a softer, more peaceful way. Stay here for three more breaths. One more breath, long, deep breath. Begin to feel the breath move the body. And with your next breath in, bend your knees. Bring your feet to the floor and roll to your right side. Mm. Stay on your right side for another couple breaths. Use this time to be conscious of how you feel, making that memory of how yoga serves you, and how your practice makes a difference in your life and your mental mental health and in your emotional responses in your physical body when we take care of our physical body our mind is taken care of so when we stretch and move and develop strength and fitness and willpower our mind follows suit and becomes stronger creates more space, is calmer and responds in a more healthy way. With your next breath in coming up to sitting, keep your eyes closed for a moment more, staying in this quiet space you've created. Bring your hands together at your heart or over your heart, by your head. And say thankful, to, say thank you to yourself and your body, your physical health, your mental and emotional health. Thank you for the gift of yoga and its ability to serve us. 
creating and combining, uh, contributing to our health. Thank you for teachers and the wisdom that they have given us to guide others. And thank you for being a student, a forever student, myself included, staying open to learning and becoming more, becoming your best. Have a beautiful day. Namaste. Shalom. Gorsh Tov.